Hey guys, welcome to Tula Tech Talk. We have a question from one of our patrons that I want to answer in a video because I thought it could probably be pretty useful for a lot of different people and probably pretty interesting to some different people as well. So this question is about the Corsair 880 and our patron's name is Donner Gr Grigsby. So for those of you who don't know, we got a chance to take hold of a demo Corsair 880, hold on to it for a few months and do all sorts of sailing with it. We did some racing, we did a ton of cruising on it, um, and we even just sailed it for fun, like as fast as we possibly could and just really testing it out and getting it figured out. So great experience, really cool boat. Here is Donner's question. I've searched the internet for these answers and came up short. I am hoping that you could answer a few questions about the Corsair 880. The winds tend to be light here in Virginia, so I'm considering the sport version. I would like to know roughly what the max carrying weight is for the 880. I don't require an exact figure. I know you mentioned that it got faster when you shed the food weight coming around Miami. So how sensitive is it for a few hundred pounds difference? I am with Captain Billy on the lithium batteries, but does does he think two of them is enough for house power? My plan is to forego the stove in favor of a toaster oven and you'll use dual generator Hondas so I can run 30 amps if needed. The, that additional weight is a concern for me. I plan to use the V berth as a garage and possibly the F bunk as well since I plan to travel solo. Uh, so a bunch of different parts in this uh, question here. Uh, short version, short answer, basically a few hundred pounds does not make a huge difference on this boat unless maybe you're racing and you're trying to be competitive with other Corsairs that are really close to you. A few hundred pounds is not a huge deal, but a few hundred pounds easily turns into a thousand pounds if you're not careful. And that starts to make a big difference, at least from our experience. So. We'll start from the beginning. Uh, the wind tends to be light here in Virginia, and I'm considering the sport version. I honestly don't really see a huge disadvantage to the sport version. Um, it's just some extra cost, um, and then a little bit of extra mass length um, when you're trailering it. You have extra power with that, so for light winds, especially if you're considering loading the boat up a little bit more, that's a nice way to just have that extra power to be able to drive that boat, accelerate the boat and get it, especially I'll go into this a little bit more later, but like get it to the planing speed rather than just kind of uh, the displacement speed. All right, so let's go into weight a little bit. So we sailed that boat just bare bones, completely skeleton, plus just our safety equipment and just the essential gear. And we've also sailed it as heavy as when we were doing the Florida loop, we loaded it up, especially from like the west coast of Florida going out to dry Tortugas and then to the Keys. We had it like a ton of food on there, a bunch of the full water tank and a bunch of extra water tanks, a bunch of water sports equipment like kite, kite surf stuff, um, uh, free dive equipment, spear fishing stuff, plates, minimal but plates and pots and pans um, again minimal but that all that adds up a bigger anchor one of our mantis anchors instead of the light aluminum anchor that was with the boat a ton of camera gear chargers computers all that stuff so i'd say we probably have like a solid like what two thousand pounds on that boat especially when you include all the water water weight really adds up so we probably had close to two thousand pounds and from that run from the west coast of florida sailing out to the dry tortugas I definitely felt a difference there. It felt a little more sluggish. It felt like it didn't want to get up to that planing speed quite as easily. So let's talk about that for a second. When it sails under like eight knots, it's just fully displacing. It's just like sailing normal. As soon as you get past 10 knots, you're fully planing it. You can see the wake separating from the transom. The boat just feels like it releases a little bit more off the water. Um, and that's when the boat starts to come alive. So when we were sailing heavy, loaded up with cruising stuff from the west coast of Dry Tortugas, I could certainly feel that it just took a little more energy, a little more power to kind of break that gray area and get the boat planing. And there was some swell, so we were getting some surfs in and stuff like that, but it definitely felt like it took that little bit of extra power to do that, and the boat was just a little more sluggish and accelerating compared to when we sailed the boat when it was extremely light. Those are the extremes. You load the 880 up with a few thousand pounds of gear, you're gonna notice a difference there. Everything else inside of there is just a gray area. It's just, all right, how, how much do you wanna see that acceleration? How quickly do you wanna be able to break that eight to 10 knot 
uh, planing barrier? How quickly do you want to be able to get up on plane and really skimming over the water like that boat just is meant to, really? Um, the lighter you can keep the boat, the quicker it's going to do that stuff. With that being said, you can still load it up with cruising gear and it'll still sail and they'll still probably sail better than, um, you know, a, a monohull of the same size. So we, we, we shed the food weight coming around Miami. It wasn't necessarily the food weight. It was food, but it was also a lot of the water and, and stuff like that. And that's certainly a few hundred pounds and we could feel feel the boat starting to lighten up around that point. Uh, lithium batteries, I mentioned like if I was gonna get that boat, I don't see a reason not to get lithium batteries. I'm for lithium just in general. Like if, if budget doesn't constrain you on that, I think it's a no brainer. Like they're so much lighter for the same space and a much better uh, battery storage capacity. Do I think two of them is enough house power? I got to be honest, I forget all the specs of everything. I forget how it comes standard with AGM and how many amp hours that is. I forget what, what the options are to upgrade that. Um, and when you say two of them, it depends what the amp hours are. But if you're, we're talking two 100 amp hour lithium batteries, that's 200 amp hours for your house bank. For that boot, honestly, yeah, I think that's plenty. That's what we had on adrenaline and we cruise full time and live full time on adrenaline. So yeah, if you just manage your power, like relatively, like and you don't have any huge loads, then that should be plenty for you. That should be pretty good. All right, so the last part of the question is, my plan is to forego the stove in favor of a toaster oven and use dual uh, Honda generators to, so I can run 30 amp if needed. I plan to use the V-Birth as a garage and possibly the aft bunk as well since I plan to travel solo. So I think that's a good idea to use the V-Birth as a garage. We found that to be like the best storage place, especially if you're traveling solo, I'd probably consider sleeping in the aft bunk that was really comfortable, especially for one person. And you have like the shelves up on the sides of the aft bunk where you can put all your clothes and stuff. Um, and then, I mean, it depends how much stuff you have. Like if you have too much stuff where you need more storage than the V-Birth and whatever else you have around you outside of like all the storage cubbies and stuff, then I don't know, that's getting to be a lot of stuff. But there is a lot of like storage cubbies, the whole V-Birth, the shelves in the aft bunk. I mean, you got room. Let's get back to the power part of it. Uh, toaster oven instead of the uh, stove. Yeah, I, I don't see a problem with that. Um, but two Honda generators so you can have 30 amps if needed. You don't need two Honda generators to have enough power to run that toaster oven. You, one will certainly do it. That's a, We had that on our old trawler and that worked perfectly fine. You cannot get 30 amps out of one Honda, but I don't know why you would need that much power anyway is what I'm saying. And even if you're talking about like going to Marina and being able to plug in the shore power, um, you could do that with just an extension cord and a little 30 amp adapter. Um, and you just can't exceed the 15 or 20 amp uh, rating, whatever it is. But I, again, I don't see how you would unless you're like using the toaster oven and the hot water heater at the same time. I forget if the hot water heater is AC or DC. I think it's, uh, I forget. Anyway, I, I, advise against having two of those generators. Everyone knows how I feel about those generators. People think I hate them. I actually really like them. And one of those on that boat, if you're cruising full time, I think it's perfect. And consider getting the, instead of the 2000, get the 2200 and you have just that little bit of extra power in just one generator and still just as quiet, just as big. Um, I think that's perfect, but I don't think you need two of them. I don't think you need like an official 30 amp on that boat. Just carry around that little shore power plug that adapts your extension cord to 30 amp. So I hope that answers your question. I'm look, I'm not a professional, but we did have a few months experience on that boat. So I think we have a really good idea of what it's like to live and cruise on it and what it's like to sail it fast and everything like that. So I hope that helps. I hope our, our perspective helps on uh, some of those questions. And yeah, if you have any more questions, just let us know in the comments.